Good evening, everyone. There we go. Green screen's fixed. My name is Heath Haskins, Good Primate, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. Now, I know that there's a lot of April Fool's jokes going on right now. This ain't one of them. So in a world of trolls and a day of trolling to be done, um, we are going to take a nice break for the next 30 minutes. I'm just going to build and hang out and have fun. Uh, you may have noticed my shirt. I did make a the uh, Roblox Jolly Roger um, icon thingy. So um, I can actually show that to you over here where I was messing around with it. Uh, maybe. Hold on. Where's studio? There we go. So fade, 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 fade. Right here's the the logo that I was working on. If I do Control Z Z Z Z Z Z like that, you can kind of see my reverse of everything that I was doing and working on. I was trying to get all the all the teeth to look correct, and then I think is that as far back as it, it will go? Oh well. All right, so I'll Control Y it back forward. There we go. So that's where that's where I had ended up, and then I removed the bones and stuff. Uh, but this is this is the actual Roblox T-shirt. I have the template right there, and did the whole thing. So it just I, I thought it looked cool. Uh, I thought you guys might like it too. So um, there was some misconceivedness of like death to Roblox Studio. That's that's not it. It, it comes from uh, the 2015 hackers. Um, hackers. It's not 2015. 1995. 1995. So this is like one of my favorite all-time movies growing up, and this was their icon. Boom, boom, right there. And I love this icon. In fact, I was thinking, oh, you know what? We can actually, let's go back over here. Let's go back to this. Um, okay, just for, just for fun. Just for fun, let's do this. Let's uh, unflatten this. Uh, for the background, let's go ahead and change that to an actual black color. Hold on, hold on. We're going to be artistic today, just for a moment, so you can you can see. Oh, that's not. Uh, da, 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 da. There's like a cautionary color. Why is it not? Oh, Control Shift A. There we go. Boom. Um, and then for the pasted layer, can I do that in here as well? Mm. Oh, that looks cool. And then we can do that in there, that there. Hold on, can we zoom in a little bit? There we go. We're doing we're doing like a threshold, aren't we? Hmm. Not sure that I like that, but it does give it that like 1995 feel. So that's that's kind of cool. Can we push this threshold up a little bit? Oh yeah, that that looks better. Okay, so let's uh, Control Z all this. Push that threshold up a little bit. There we go. That looks better. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a different layer. Control Z. What layer is that on? Is that that's that layer? So there we go. That looks good. That's looking fresh. Got some freshness going on there. Oh, did I miss one? Yeah, I missed that one right there. Okay. So, now that that's a pasted layer, why is, why is this, okay, hold on, ha, that's funny. Uh, is that a layer as well? Yeah, that eyeball is a layer, that's why I missed it. So, let's take that out, take this out, take that out, and we, oops, control Z, take that out, and there we go. Oh, bucket fill. Okay. Let's go maxi. Uh, no, no, no. Maximize that. Let's take this out. Nice. Oh, I guess we could just do control A, delete, and then paint it all back in, couldn't we? There we go. That'll work. So now we can unlink these, and there we go. Uh, let's go to this layer. And we actually want to delete the background. So. Just gonna hold some pluses here. I don't want the background to actually be. Oops. There we go. Plus plus. 
I keep forgetting that the teeth are another layer. There we go. And delete. Oh, we missed a bone. And the other bone. Delete. There we go. Sweet. Okay. And then if we go to the teeth layer. And on. What's gonna happen if I delete those? Is it it's gonna turn let's let's turn these Hmm, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's leave those alone for a moment. So, this is what it looks like right now, but when we go to here, and we invert the colors, colors, invert. Oh, control Z, control shift A. Colors, invert. Ooh, nice. And we'll do an invert on the eye as well. Colors invert. And then for these, we do colors invert. Uh-oh. See, that's what I was talking about. The, the teeth were going to be changed weirdly. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so I do like that. Uh, let's go ahead and flatten the image, just for fun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Save this first, save. And now we want to flatten the image. Flatten image, like that. And if we look around the edge here, there's like a weird color. Is that on the... Uh, Click, click, there we go, got it. So is it is it a skull and crossbones with uh, hackers? No, it's not, it's just the caution sign. So we need to pull up a caution sign. Um, let's see, caution, wow. Caution sign, caution sign, of course. There we go. So, <clears throat> that's what I want right there. Copy. Let's go over here and paste. Oops. Let's do uh, undo on here. And here we go. Paste to new layer. And we'll just, actually, is that, that, that about the right size? No, it's not. No, not at all. So we're going to scale this up. Scale, scale, scale. Good, scale. And now we should be able to select the boundaries on the outside and delete. Control Shift A. Nice. Now this background I can delete just like that. Um, as for these letters on the inside of the caution sign, see all this stuff? We can pick up this color and then magic erase all this stuff. Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Whoops. Uh, what, 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 what? Invert and delete. Hmm. Maybe it's because it's an alpha color? Oh, we don't want it white. Stop. And you didn't do quite as well as you thought either, did you? All right. Select borders. Three is fine. There we go. Get rid of that stuff as well. Do, 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 do. Good. Control shift A. Now, technically, if I move this down to right about there and I put this to the background, that's kind of what I was going for. That looks pretty cool. I like it right there in the middle. Maybe, maybe make this a little bit smaller. Can we scale this down some? Maybe right there. That's, that looks kind of good. Scale. And then on this layer here, this layer, what we can do is take, just delete this out. 
on, come on, double click. There we go. Delete. What are you doing? No, 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 no. This layer. Delete. There we go. Yay! So now I have a like a the the same symbol, kinda. Uh, the hacker is 1995. There it is. That's the little symbol, kind of. I like it. Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and file save as, and we're just going to call this Roblox Dev Skull Caution. Even though I probably spelled that wrong. That's fine. Anyhow, that's uh, that's how to make cool stuff in GIMP and things. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, yeah, I'm distracted. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, that's that's uh, kind of some of the things that I do to have fun, you know. Now that's kind of fun. It's like a party trick. Where you chop and then you take the bottom. Oh, it fell. Impress your friends in lumber by doing this cool party trick. This one party trick. Um, how many clickbaits are out there today? Because I'm, I'm recording this on the 31st, not the first. So I'm just I'm curious. I know that Jack has already sent out his April 1st funny, but I, I'm not sure that lying about lumber updates is a good idea anymore. Which, it's, it's April 1st. It's still funny. <laughs> funny, funny. I'm excited. I might even uh, change the intranet page tomorrow. Who knows? <sighs> it's it's funny because, like, the the people who work on the intranet page and, like, they, they are the ones that use the most, they usually get a little kick out of the, the little Easter eggs that I hide and stuff. But then you get, like, a higher up that gets a hold of it and they're like, what is this? This isn't funny. And I'm like, oh, oh sorry. I thought it was funny. Kind of. <laughs> I don't think it's funny now. Now that I'm in trouble, that's kind of second guessing my life choices after this point, but that's that's all. So, if you're out there, oh, I guess I should probably switch back over to regular, regular me. If you're out there, and if you're if you get a chance to troll somebody, or if you get a chance to pull an April Fool's joke, do it. All right, YOLO. You only live once. Yeet something into into the April Fool's Day. You know, should be a, a full day of trolling and, and fun fun things. I can't wait to see what some of the bigger, higher up uh, YouTubers come up with. I'll be keeping an eye out. The internet is full of trolls anyway, and now it's just like, it's like their holiday. <laughs> internet trolls come together. And if you're looking for uh, songs to listen to, check out Party Troll. That's uh, one of my favorite songs on the internet. It's Party Troll, and that, that is not an April Fool's joke. That is one of my legit favorite songs. Just so you know. Um, that's it. We did the we did the pine, right? Now we need the fir tree. Uh, but first, I need a wire of some kind. Do I have one? Yeah, there we go. Let's move. I'm just gonna write P down here for pine. I N E There we go. Pine. Pine tree. Uh should we go get Oh, I guess we don't have we don't have enough money to buy another uh plot. So well, shoot, you guys want to go blow up some trees for, for April 1st? For, for fun? That should be interesting and exhilarating. Um, I have been stressed out by my daughter and her ability in the math section of her homework. Just watch the video. So, I have been watching my kids do launch 
which is their their online schooling program and i can't believe the easiness how easy it has become for them to do their their homework and stuff nice nice that is such a big explosion i love it um you know i remember having to do like all the odd questions to a worksheet with 30 30 questions on it which is 15 questions that you had to come up with write out and get done and you never got enough time during school to do it never you always had homework always didn't matter what day of the week it was didn't matter if there was a holiday didn't matter if there was a school day or a snow day you had to get it done so and that's me complaining about the 90s you know like I, I could only imagine the kind of work you guys had to do the the boomer generation you know and the the silent generation that's saying a lot because that's acknowledging that I'm old but there's five questions there's 10 questions there's one that had 15 questions and that that one I was legit like hey there we go there's there's something and then I looked at the questions themselves and it's like they weren't really math questions it's just asking you if you understood the knowledge um but the the thing I don't understand is these five questions if you go down to the bottom there's a video of this guy with the worksheet it's a, it's a teacher with the exact same worksheet and he goes through step by step on all the questions that are on the page that you're looking at and my daughter refuses to watch the video she says the guy's the voice is annoying she says it's so boring it puts her to sleep i don't care i don't care i don't care i'm looking at you i don't care just get the schoolwork done you delayed tonight uh, like i'm talking directly to my daughter right now you delayed tonight for three hours three hours for five questions now there were three assignments so i understand the one that had the 15 questions that might have taken you 10 minutes but the video is five minutes long they're they're not longer than five minutes so a maximum of three assignments watching the videos seeing the problems understanding and just writing what the guy wrote 15 minutes you could have been done you could have had everything uploaded you could have just been done for the day done with math but instead she waits until dad gets off work so i can help her with her math homework because i'm the computer guy i'm the i'm the science math guy which i still don't understand i was i was horrible at math in high school i sucked at math in high school what happened i don't know i i really don't i love computers i love programming i love the troubleshooting the problem solving and the figuring out the cool stuff to do in the background it's like spell casting for nerds it's like for computer geek guys it's not so much the actual creation of a game but knowing what codes i can throw at it to cause it to do things things that seem like magic to to somebody who doesn't understand programming language that's what i love that's what i love about programming that's what i love about coming up with because if you've if you've ever looked at my game designs okay I'm not going to lie. I never sit down and say, I'm going to make this game that goes A to B and it's a Roblox game. None of my games are ever like that. They're <laughs> far from. Um, I want to take over the camera. I want to program the inputs manually. Like they've got an entire library of, of controller inputs that you can use right out of the box. Like it is... It's binding to actions that your character can do. The, the, like even if I, even Lumber right now, I know Defaulto has done some programming, but like it's programmed to do it. I don't want to do that. I want to know the input of the up, down, left, right. And I want to program it to my own functions to do my own things. Not have it taken over by the default avatar from programming that somebody else did. So if you look inside like all the games that I've done in the past, Theus 
it's a top-down shooter game with spaceships, you know? And I was trying to kind of replicate this game that used to be called Subspace Continuum? Contortium? Something like that. And I got really close. And it works, but I didn't put in a scoring system. I didn't put in... Uh, like a game controlling system, like I didn't care to. <laughs> the game part of it, I wasn't interested in. I just wanted to make the controllers work. And I did. And I got bored with it. And I moved on. So, then the other one, uh, the sitting room. The sitting room originally started as a flat plane with 18 chairs in a circle. And that was so people could come in and talk to me inside the game. That's all it was. Until... I hit about 5,000 subscribers. And I thought, hmm, I might want to start doing things. So I ended up creating the sitting room that had like a floor and a dome with a whole bunch of chairs inside. And then it evolved from there and it just, it started evolving. It's a sitting room, it's not a game. It's, it's just a place to like go and hang out whenever I had to live stream or we had to wait for something to happen, you know? I don't know. I just, I feel like the games that I create aren't really games. They're more like experiments in programming language and the, and the code. Because I, I understand Roblox. I understand the Lua scripting. I understand the module scripts. I understand all of this and how it works and how it relates to the 3D like instances of what's inside the game right now. And how it all ties to HTML requests and the network side of things. I could probably write an exploit. I could sit down in C Sharp and create an injection program that would cause uh, a command line to appear down here at the bottom right hand side. It would be the same as doing like this, only getting the actual like command line. So you could type in whatever you wanted. From that, you could inject your own Lua script and create those interfaces that cause the exploits. A lot of people ask me all the time, Code, why do you not like them so much? Why do you, why do you so against exploits? One of the main reasons I'm against it is because people use it and don't understand it. So I feel very disrespected as a packer and developer that, that people are using these programs and not fully understanding what it could be doing in the background, what it's not doing, what it is doing in the background. You just don't understand. You just want a way to mod the game. And that's the majority of users. They want to be able to mod, right? But that's also the majority of most people in all things, okay? They want the easy thing that they don't have to really pay for, or they just want to pay somebody to do it and just get it done and still not understand it. This is why we have mechanics who work on cars constantly. That's their specialty, right? Like, I don't know how to change my own oil. I could probably Google it or watch a YouTube video and figure it out. And most of the car problems that I have, I usually Google them first before I take it to a mechanic. But at the same time, I still I at least try to understand the mechanic of what it's working or what it's doing or what it's not doing before I go and use something. But when it comes to mods and exploits and downloads, people never question whether or not it's stealing your account information in the background. Whether or not it's grabbing your information, grabbing a cookie. Now, if you're using a mod or if you're using an exploit, it's not to be used. Like Roblox says, you cannot modify the code, blah, blah, blah. I understand. I know why you want to do it, but at the same time, don't. Because you don't understand. And if you happen to be a programmer hacker out there and you're creating the exploits for yourself, awesome. I want to encourage you to go further with your programming and do more than just exploits for Roblox. Because if you're able to inject into DLLs, if you're able to take over thread processes, you've got a lot more potential than, than what you're giving yourself credit for. Now, yes, it's fun, and it's always a challenge to see if I can do something, but at the same time, do something bigger. Think big, you know? And that's that's all I got for you. 
I mean, we've had 25 minutes of me ranting and raving and talking about exploits and everything else and, and the, the good and the bad of the Roblox development environment and me just basically going off on this April Fool's Day. So, that's it. I want to go play. It's been a very long day. I, I've been really stressed. Not stress, stress, but like, I've been programming this interface. Okay. So I, I can't go into details of it. Dang it. Hmm. Okay, I can tell you what I programmed today. So I've been asked to create a new program, a new application web interface that um, users can go into and they can see their their pending. That's all I can say. I can't say what, what it's pending, but see the ones that they're waiting on. See the things that they're waiting on. And it's very specific to each user. Now, in order to do this, I have what's called an SQL server in the background. And all of the information, it's in a different program that, that's running, and I can read from that da database. But a lot of the sales guys, they're, they're like not paying attention and relying on somebody else to go and see when these pending things switch over and arrive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in front of them so they can go through and go, yes, that's here. No, that's not. No, yes, yes, no. This one may or may not be here. And what it does is my application, when they first log in, it'll check to see who they are and then go grab all of their information from these three different tables, three different databases, and it compiles them together into a nice list. So when they look at it, they can say, yes, that did arrive. Click, it marks it, gets it off the board, and no, that didn't arrive. Put a comment in and tells what when it's going to arrive, stuff like that. What that is, that's just the personal interface for the salesperson, right? And then over the top of that, I'm going to have a manager's screen where they can see all of their sales guys for that particular store. We have multiple stores across seven different states, 22, 26 different stores, maybe 30. We got a lot of different, different stores, lots of sales guys, all going to be eyes on this thing. And what I did today for my programming, long story short, is I took and created... Um, a cold fusion function script that goes and does the actual grabbing of the information. I created a jQuery Ajax script which contains JavaScript functions. And then on the actual interface, the, the cold fusion HTML, I created a button with a, uh, uh, a text field. So all I had to do was type in the person's name, hit the button, it makes a request to the JavaScript. The JavaScript makes the Ajax request to the Cold Fusion in the background. The Cold Fusion grabs from the SQL, compiles it into a nice JSON query, sends it back to the JavaScript. The JavaScript takes the JSON, turns it into uh, an actual HTML table, and then delivers it back to the page to be delivered in the output down at the bottom so it looks like a nice, clean table. That's the programming I did today. I utilized Cold Fusion, JavaScript, jQuery, uh, CSS, because it has um, um, formatting, uh, SQL, and Cold Fusion function scripts. I don't know. That, that's kind of Cold Fusion. So. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm a little stressed out, but at the same time, it wasn't work. That wasn't work. Like, I'm working, and they're paying me for it. That is an amazing accomplishment. Like, I got paid today for doing that, for literally figuring out how to create this interface for all these different technologies to go and pull information. I hope you're still listening. I hope you're still here and I hope I haven't bored you all to tears because this really is, it's its just me talking. I mean, my, I, I'm not even running a Roblox channel anymore. I could just turn off the Roblox in the background and keep talking like this and it just, that's what it would be. So, um, continue hacking. <laughs> Real hacking, not exploiting. If you're exploiting, stop. Uh, get out there, learn some code, learn some programming, uh, go, go buy my book. And if you don't want to buy my book, there's, there's a lot of other programming Roblox code books out there. And I'll tell you, if you've never done programming before, if you've never programmed a script in your life, get my book because it, it's only 255 pages. It will take you from nothing to programming in the whole book. Like you will be able to program by the time the book's over. And it doesn't stop there. It tells you where to go, 
what to search for when you want to go further. And it doesn't it doesn't waste time with like the history and like the extras like it's here's how to program here's what they are go. <sighs> Anyhow, that's it. I think I think I'm done. Love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of videos like a good YouTuber does, but it's your choice. If you want to, go for it. If not, that's cool too. You were here, you watched, you had fun. I think I'm going to make a shed or something so I can put all my extra stuff in it. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get this all <sighs> clustered, no clustering. Because I, I usually cluster and that's never good. Weren't we going to at one time create a drop of some kind? Something that threw the wood down there so it would be right next to the thing so we could sell it? We'll have to come up with something. All right. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. <laughs> Outro. Outro. And happy April Fools. Want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Outro.